In this video, I want to show you the interesting example that happened with one of my students during the practice assignment, and it's related to the web tables. So web tables often are tricky to automate, and I want to show you interesting use case of uh, what I mean. And let me walk you quickly through the steps. So it's implemented with a page object. So technically what was done is just navigated to the owner's page, then we've selected the pet in our pet clinic application and added a visit to this pet. Then we added the second visit, which is a five days behind the current visit. And then the validation was to make sure that the dates are in chronological order. And the second thing is to validate that the date is actually is in the table in the first column in the table. So let me show you how it looks in the application. So that's the owner information page and that's the pets and visit. And for this pet Samantha, we wanted to validate that this date is available in the first column of the table. So how it was implemented. Let's look into the code and into the method implementation. The idea was this. So first we find the section on the page that is responsible for this that. So it's this section of the page to isolate the section of the page that we are working with. Then the next step, we found all table rows for the table visits in this section. So this rows, rows number one and row number two. And the next idea was to loop through all table rows, extract the value from each row of the first column using method text content put all those values into the array and then validate that array of the values that we have collected from the first column of the table contains the date that we are looking for. All right, I know that some of you may tell, hey, we could done it easily with just all text contents method, right? I know it is possible, but we are talking about not about this example. We are talking about how tricky tables can be. And if you're interested to know how this can be implemented differently, just let me know in the comments and I will update this section to show you how it can be simplified with method all text contents. All right, so let's move on. And I have created the just portion or section of this test to show you exactly how the issue can happen and where the issue is exactly. So let's run this and see how it's going to fail. So that's this test and I run it in the uh, test runner. So test is running and, and it is expectedly failed. Let's look at the error message. So content timeout, of course, because the timeout for this test configured to 10 seconds instead of 30 seconds. And then the locator that uh, framework was looking for, but was not able to find. So let's look into details what Playwright was trying to find and was not able to. So first it found the list. It's filtered by the pet name Samantha is this pet right here. So this section, right? Then we found all rows. Since it was a loop, we got the first row of the table. And then within the first row of the table, we found the column and we tried to get the first column inside of that row. But if we look into the test application, look, it seems normal, right? So if I make right click inspect, so we have table, we have table head. So let me scroll it down. So we have table, we have table head, we have two table rows. And according to the code, everything seems normal. It should work, but it was not working. So right, look at here, table, we should have all table rows and within the table row, find the column. If we expand the T head, look what we have here. We have another table row. And this table row does not have a columns. It has th tag, which represents a table head cells. Playwright was picking up the first row inside of the list. And within this first row was trying to find td tag, which is not there, of course. And because of that, it was failing and locator was not found. So let's quickly update this test and I will show you how we can just skip the first row of the table and work only with the remaining of the rows inside of our table to fix this test. So going back to the code. So here, instead of calling all inside of our loop, I will call it right here. And now this will be a wait. So pet visit table rows will actually give us a list of the elements. 
And then here, instead of calling method all, I call method slice. And what slice method gonna do, it's gonna look inside of our array and just remove the first item from the array. And technically array will start from the second item. So from the item with index one. So the first element in the array will be just skipped and then loop will start from element one and then element two. This is how it's gonna work. And then we can remove a weight over here since we don't need it anymore. And uh, I guess that's it. We can rerun this test and see what's gonna happen. So I click run it again. And now test pass successfully. All right, this was a quick example. I wanted to show you how tricky web tables are. Always look into the error message in console log. Console log can give you a lot of insights and after you got the information, what was not found, just go and inspect your DOM and the structure of your element. It will give you a lot of insights. And if you're curious to know how this can be done differently using all text contents method with just a couple of lines of code, just let me know in the comments and I will update this example with a new video. All right, that's all I wanted to share. If you like, subscribe and put the likes and see you in the next one.